welcome to another Coffee with Callum and thank you for joining me. I had the great pleasure during the week of addressing the Tangible Ireland Ambassador School in Kilmallock in County Limerick. Uh, Raymond Sexton, who heads up uh, the Tangible Ireland Network, uh, invited me to speak and because of the truly global nature of that network, uh, I decided that I would revisit a blog that I put out some time back, but I'd also expand on the same. And the blog is Ireland, an island at the centre of the world. And if you look at your screen there, you will see that Ireland is, in fact, an island right at the centre of the world. And that puts us right in the middle in terms of opportunity between all the various superpowers out there and emerging markets. And I'd like to explore that, if I may. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about a changing Ireland. I'm going to talk to you about the Pope. I'm going to talk to you about a changing world. I'm going to talk to you about the Rose of Tralee. I'm going to talk to you about an ice hockey player. I'm going to talk to you about sanitary towels, believe it or not, and I'm going to talk to you about a hedgehog, and I'm confident that over the next few minutes, I'm going to weave all of this together in a particular way that will give you a renewed sense of the importance of Ireland and Ireland at the centre of the world and the opportunities for you and I therein. So, changing Ireland. Ireland is changing. Let's just look at Leo Varadkar our Taoiseach, our Prime Minister. And Leo is the youngest ever Prime Minister of Ireland, the youngest ever Taoiseach at age 47. He's also openly gay and he's also of ethnic minority background. Now that's a shake up for the books for sure. It was Leo himself that gave me the title for the blog, An Island at the Centre of the World, when he spoke in Limerick some months back. And I thought, what an interesting phrase, and I decided to build on it for a blog I put out, and I'd like to build on that further for this particular presentation. The truth is that Ireland is an island at the centre of the world and we've constantly proven we can punch above our weight. And in truth, I believe Ireland, our little island at the centre of the world, is in fact a David to the world's Goliath. Let's look at a few examples. We had the plastic bag levy in 2002. In 2002, Ireland was the first country in the world, as I understand it, to introduce a levy for plastic bags, thus effectively changing the way we shop forever. But it didn't just stop there because the world was watching and the world saw, well, if Ireland can do it, we can do it, and country after country after country after country followed suit. The smoking ban in 2004 caused all sorts of problems for many people, not least of which was the hospitality industry. But I don't believe there's anybody here in Ireland, this island at the centre of the world, would go back to smoky pubs, smoky buses, smoky offices, smoky restaurants. Fully sure that we wouldn't. Ireland led the world, they bit the bullet, made the smoking ban happen, and again, country after country after country followed suit. The world has changed as a result. We had the marriage equality referendum in 2015 that was carried by a large majority. Ireland was not the first country in the world to recognise same-sex marriage, but it was the first country in the world to do so by popular referendum. And that's the difference. And what's happened since? Country after country after country after country has followed suit, changing the world forever. Then this year we had the Eighth Amendment repealed also by popular referendum and by a large majority. In everything that I'm presenting here, I'm not going to let you know how I feel or how I voted on any, any of the above. I'm just showing you that Ireland is changing, changing rapidly. And Ireland is an island at the centre of the world and the ripples that are being sent out from Ireland are effectively changing the world forever. We had the Pope's visit in 1979, almost 40 years ago. And I was there, I was there in Ballybrit when the Pope came and he said, young people of Ireland, I love you. And it was just wonderful. Wonderful. It was a magical experience. I was part of a church folk group back in those days and truthfully I was in love with people in general, in love with my faith, loved Ireland, everything was great. Okay, But Ireland has changed in the intervening years. Now we've got the Pope's visit in 2018 and I believe the Pope, is, Pope Francis is coming into a very different Ireland, a very different Ireland to what it was 40 years ago. Everything in Ireland is different since. The Catholic Church has lost its grip or is losing its grip on politics in Ireland. And even though I'm Catholic, I for one am not at all unhappy about that because uh, I think church and state have very different remits and never the twain should meet. Let's look at the world that we live in, the world that Ireland is at the centre of. We've got Trump's America. You know, who would have thought, <laughs> right? But we live in a very different world. Post Obama, we're into Donald Trump. America is very different as a result. The world is very different. I don't get the man. Truthfully, I don't get the man. I, you know, uh, I, I've no idea how he came to power. It makes me nervous that a man like that is in power. But I've also heard the other side of the story. I've heard that capitalists in America are delighted because uh, the Nasdaq is rising. Their business seems to be on the up and he seems to be a hero to some. I just don't understand the man. And here's the problem. You know, you put somebody like that into power in America and as a result, the ripples spread around the world. We've got Brexit. 
uh, Michael O'Leary of, of Ryanair called it the greatest suicide note in history. Waiting for the axe to drop. The axe is going to drop on my birthday next year. And uh, again, we're going to be in a very different world. But I believe that Brexit will be a huge opportunity for Ireland, our little island at the centre of the world, if we play our cards right. And assuming that we don't go back to those horrible days of a hard border. I want to introduce you to this book called Factfulness. James Cavanagh sent it to me some time back. And it's a truly wonderful book. I recommend you get it and you read it and absorb it. In Factfulness, Hans Rosling from Sweden breaks the world into four income levels. You and I are fully aware of the talk that says uh, the gap between rich and poor is getting wider the whole time. I'm not certain that it's getting wider the whole time. What I am certain about having read Factfulness is that uh, the gap is filled with billions of people. And that's really interesting. We need to understand what's going on in the gap between rich and poor. So in Factfulness, uh, Hans Rosling breaks the world into four income levels. He talks about level one. People in level one, and there are one billion people living in level one, live on less than two dollars a day. And they get around on their own two bare feet, they cook over an open flame like a cook fire, they fetch water in a bucket, and they sleep on the ground. And there are about a billion souls on the planet, geographically spread, but about a billion souls on the planet that live at level one. And then there's level two, and this is the largest income group. Three billion people live at level two. They get by on between two and eight dollars a day, and they might have some possessions like a bicycle, a mattress, or a gas canister for cooking at home. But it's vastly different, and three billion people live on level two. Level three is the second most populous category after level two. Two billion people live here, and they live on anywhere between eight dollars and thirty-two dollars a day. Listen to this, they have running water, they might own a motorbike or car, and their meals are rich and colourful. They also probably have electricity in a fridge, which makes things like studying and eating enough varied nutrients easier. That's a huge difference up from level two. Level four, like level one, roughly one billion of the world's people live on this level. They make $32 a day or more, and they have things like running water, both hot and cold, at home, a vehicle in the driveway, and plenty of nutrients on their plate. And they also have likely had a chance to finish 12 years or more of school. And level four is where Ireland sits in the world today. Let's look at the World Health and Wealth Map as offered in that wonderful book, Factfulness. You'll see uh, X, Y axis, the X axis along the bottom is income, uh, level one to the left, level four to the right. So in other words, poor to the left, rich to the right. In terms of health, we've got sick at the bottom of the Y axis and healthy at the top. So if you look closely at your screen, you will see that Somalia is uh, regrettably a very poor country and has very poor health. On the top right hand corner you've got uh, Japan up there, red dot Japan, and uh, it's one of the wealthiest countries in the world and also one of the healthiest. And where does Ireland sit? Right up there in level four. So one of the advantages of a country moving from level one to level two, and level two to level three, and level three to level four, is that the health of the nation typically improves as well. Back in the 1840s our population was decimated by famine. Over a million people died of starvation here and another million or more left our shores. But let's look at the world in 1840. If you have a look at the screen in front of you, you'll see that all of the countries that we're talking about, to a large extent, apart from the UK, were at income level one. In other words, we were desperately poor. Move on to 1850 and you can see there's a gradual and consistent shift upwards. 1900, again a shift upwards. The size of the dots also indicate population size. The larger the dot, clearly the larger the population. Move on to 1920, effectively a century ago, and look what's happening. We've got the likes of the United States and the United Kingdom just about to tip into level three. Germany, France, and Ireland in there, a square in level two, and China and India still way back in level one. Let's move on. Something happened in China, not quite sure, back in 1950, and uh, China seems to have slipped back. India stayed where it was, and all the other countries are moving up into level three. 1980, not terribly long ago when the Pope was last here, that's where we were, level three, some countries beginning to tip into level four. But look at China and India, still way back in level one. That was only in 1980. Look what happens next. Things keep moving on, but watch China and India down there in 1990. And in 2000, watch China and India. And in 2010, watch China and India. Catching up big time. And in 2018, watch China and India. 
So the rest of us are in level four and the emerging markets, the huge emerging markets, China and India are moving up through those income levels very rapidly. So one more time, just watch the large red circles. I'm gonna fly through this, okay? 1840, 1850, 1900, 1920, 1950, 1980, 1990, 2000, 2010, and 2018. So what's gonna happen in 2040? There's our little island at the center of the world, and that's the question we need to ask ourselves, what's going to happen in 2040? And to prove that Ireland is changing in a rapidly changing world, let's just look at the Rose of Tralee. The Rose of Tralee Festival also happened during the week, and a new rose is crowned. You see, in 2040, our population, according to Leo Varadkar, will be back to 8 million people. Our population in 2040 will have returned to pre-famine times. It has taken two full centuries to get our population back to where it was before the famine. Two full centuries. But it's going to be a very different Ireland. Long gone, long gone is the red hair, pale skin, freckled nation. So let's simply look at the Rose of Tralee. I'm delighted to see a beautiful colored girl who's Rose of Tralee, who's gonna represent Ireland all around the world through 2018. Let's talk about a nice hockey player. Why a nice hockey player? Because Wayne Gretzky is a Hall of Famer ice hockey player, top of his game. He was asked, how did you become top of your game, Wayne? And he said, it's very simple. I learned to skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. So let's explore it for a second. Can you just imagine I'm a rookie hockey player? You can see clearly how I would chase that puck all over the field. Of course I would because that's what I would think I would have to do as a rookie. Wayne Gretzky being a professional, he said, well, hang on a second, if I'm playing against Colm O'Brien, I'll stop and I'll study his form. And I realize after time that every time Colm O'Brien gets the puck, he's gonna skite it off the right. So when Colm O'Brien gets the puck, I simply skate to where I know he's going to send the puck. I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. I wait for it to get to me, right? And then I score. How cool is that? The second thing Wayne Gretzky says is uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You see, one of the things that set Wayne Gretzky apart is he was the highest ever scorer in the uh, ice hockey leagues, highest ever by a huge margin. Why? He simply took more shots. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. What's that got to do with Ireland, our little island at the center of the world? It's got to do with the fact that we have got to prepare because the world in 2040, Ireland in 2040, is gonna be a vastly different place. And the question is, will we be ready for it? Let's just look at sanitary towels by way of example of the type of product that half of the population on the planet needs. But does everybody that need sanitary towels use sanitary towels? And the answer is no. Why don't they? Because a lot of the population simply cannot afford sanitary towels, okay? If you look at the map there, you'll see that the countries in level four, perhaps the countries in level three, uh, use sanitary towels because they can afford them. But likely the countries in level two and definitely the countries in level one do not use sanitary towels, they use something else. You see, it's the shift between levels two and level three is where the majority are headed. There are three billion people at level two, two billion people at level three, only one billion of us in level four. There's a billion, God bless them, back at level one. But the shift between levels two and level three is where the majority are headed. And what does that mean? It means that that's where the emerging markets are. The emerging markets, my friend, are China and India. And here's the thing, here's the thing. Let's take a company that's selling sanitary towels to the level four marketplace, right? Which is uh, uh, one billion people only, okay? And it's trying to make their products work in more situations. So for example, uh, it's trying to come up with a slimmer version, perhaps uh, for the yoga enthusiast or for the jogger, just by way of example. But you can see that that's an ever diminishing market. However, if they were to shift their focus from level four and niche markets and open up their core product, their core product range to level three and level two countries, if they were to put their focus there, they've already created a product that we know is going to be wanted by these people as soon as they can afford them. That's where the opportunities are for Ireland and Ireland at the center of the world in 2040 is to figure out what's gonna happen in those emerging markets and prepare ourselves to offer to them stuff that we know we already want. Because if we want it today, if we're buying it today here in Ireland, they will want it. But here's the thing, there are five billion people, of the seven billion people on the planet, there are five billion people who over the next 20, 25 years will begin to want the products that we take for granted here today in Ireland. Let's just talk about hedgehogs and I'll finish on this if I may. What do hedgehogs do best in the world? Hedgehogs do hedgehog. 
the best in the world, right? Hedgehogs are the very best at being hedgehogs. Simple as. What are hedgehogs known for? They're known for curling up in a ball and protecting themselves when danger, when danger threatens, okay? What's that got to do with Ireland and Ireland at the center of the world? Well, the hedgehog concept asks us to ask ourselves, what can you be the best in the world at? What can Ireland Inc. be the best in the world at? It asks, what are you deeply passionate about? What is Ireland Inc. deeply passionate about? And it asks, what drives your economic engine? Okay, what can you be the best in the world at? What are you deeply passionate about at what drives your economic engine? So if Ireland Inc. figures out what we can be the best in the world at, if Ireland Inc. figures out what we're deeply passionate about, if Ireland Inc. figures out what drives our economic engine, well then Ireland, our little island at the centre of the world, can in fact become a hedgehog. It can become the very best at being Ireland Inc. Okay? So if Ireland does become a hedgehog and really becomes the very best at being Ireland, right, and then skates to where the puck is going to be in 2040 and realise that 5 billion people on the planet are moving up through incomes level 2, 3 and into 4, that's where the opportunities are going to exist for Ireland in 2040, our little island at the centre of the world. I'm going to finish on this quote, if I may, Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Wonderful words. And that applies to you, and it applies to me, and it applies to Ireland, our little island at the centre of the world. Folks, thank you for thinking with me through this week's Coffee with Column, an extended version. Very much appreciate your presence. Very much appreciate you giving me the time. I hope and trust as ever that you got something from it. If you have done, you think somebody else would benefit, I'd be delighted if you'd pass the link on. If it's your first time here and you'd like more of this type of stuff, go to the homepage, colinobrienmotivation.com and leave me some details and I'll make sure you get a link like this on a weekly basis. Most importantly, please consider what's been shared here today and apply it into your thinking for this next week. And then equally as importantly, please come back next week. We'll share another coffee together and I'll ruminate on some other aspect of life and business. In the meantime, get some good coffee for sure. Get some R&R, &R, get some fresh air. If you spend a lot of time alone, I recommend you go meet some people. Conversely, if you spend a lot of time with people, I recommend you take a little time alone. And then when the time is right, and only when the time is right, get your head back in the game, get organized for the week ahead, get stuck in, make next week count, and I'll see you here this time next week for another Coffee with Colin. It's launch it. Ah, I really love great coffee. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.